All right. Plant out, so I'll, I'll wait. There we go. There we go. All right. So, so uh, welcome everyone uh, to our slightly delayed um, apologies due to uh, technical difficulties uh, edition of GNOME East uh, Adobe User Group. Uh, so today we'll be presenting a uh, walkthrough of a tool that was originally released as Project Griffin when it was in beta. Um, it's now called the much easier <clears throat> No comment. Uh, Adobe Experience Platform <laughs> Assurance Extension or AEP Assurance for mobile testing integrations. If you want to keep calling it Griffin, I will not blame you. I definitely do. Uh, so. Uh, first off, um, We'd like to welcome everyone for, for coming to spend the next hour and 15 minutes or so with us. And if you're not already a member of our chapter and you would like to be notified about upcoming events, uh, feel free to join. Um, also, this session and all of our other sessions are recorded and are posted at the Adobe uh, Analytics User Group uh, YouTube channel. I've put, provided links and uh, QR codes to both of those. Um, you can feel free to scan them now, or uh, they'll be in the video on the recording. It'll also be sent out afterwards. We'll send off a link to the session uh, when we're, we are done. So you'll be notified as soon as it's up. Um, and uh, should I leave this up for a little bit longer, or does, should we want to move on to our introductions? Uh, hopefully everyone's had a chance to get this, and if not, uh, I guess you can get it on the recording. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to turn you over uh, to my co-host, uh, Jeff Bloomer, to introduce himself. Thank you, Jen. So yes, uh, hello, my name is Jeff Bloomer, and I am the manager of digital analytics for Kroger Personal Finance. So if you haven't already heard of us, Kroger is the largest grocery retailer in the United States. Uh, so Kroger Personal Finance, which is the group I belong to, drives value by partnering uh, with third party vendors to bring our products to our customers. So those products would be gift cards, money services and credit cards, which uh, is made possible by a partnership with US Bank. As the manager of digital analytics, it is my job uh, to work with our digital partners to set up reporting and then work with marketing to ensure proper campaign tracking and then to ensure standards and documentation procedures uh, are properly maintained. So having been with Kroger since 2013, I spent at least my first five years doing a lot of implementation guidance and deep bugging work. So and during that time, I had plenty of exposure to tools like Charles Proxy, <laughs> and I can empathize with the pain and frustration you know other Adobe users have experienced over the years. So to this day, I still have to use the app version of Charles, the app version of Charles Proxy on rare occasions to check data coming through. So um, I can honestly say it is not my favorite way to debug or understand how data is coming through. So today I'm fortunate in that my role has it has me more focused on the reporting side and I can often turn to my collaborative partners, you know, to assist us in getting what we need when debugging is required. But not everyone has that luxury, so that's why we're here to learn more about. So I'm going to turn it over to my partner, Jen. All right, uh, so my name is Jennifer Dungan and I am the optimization manager for analytics at Torstar. Uh, most of you probably don't know that, but it's one of Canada's largest uh, publishers, media companies uh, handling the Toronto Star. We have a lot of different community and daily newspapers, mostly across the Ontario um, infrastructure. And we also handle some other uh, like vertical type things. We've got uh, rentals and uh, homes and classifieds and all, all sorts of, of product lines that that go hand in hand with a media company. I've actually been with the company since 2007, where I started as a developer. Uh, then I moved into QA and then I'm now uh, handling the analytics and I've dealt with the analytics from all of those perspectives. So I, I also know the pain of uh, unit testing and regular testing and debugging and even now UAT testing. And, you know, 
I still have to use proxies for, for certain testing because not all of our products uh, can be tested through through uh, um, Griffin, unfortunately. Hint, hint, Adobe, can we, we test some other stuff too? <laughs> but unfortunately, um, you know, it is a, it's an Adobe tool, and, but it is fabulous. I can speak from experience um, that it will make your lives so much better if you have never actually used it. So, uh, Jeff, I'm going to pass presentership over to you if you want to run the poll. Or did we got the setup, didn't we? Or we did not? Oh, nope, nope. Okay. No, we, don't, we did not have the opportunity to do that at this time. So, okay. So, uh, hopefully, maybe you can post in the chat uh, your level of experience uh, with mobile testing and Griffin in, in general. So uh, we can try and get a gauge of how many people have used it and how many people have not. And I'll go on to the next slide while those start coming in if you feel like sharing. And if not, we'll just assume everyone's starting from ground zero. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, mobile app testing in the past. Um, Basically, uh, you know, there, there was a lot of pain with this uh, in, in proxy testing. Um, you had to connect your device through a proxy uh, in, you know, running an HTTP you know, request sniffer such as Charles or Fiddler. Uh, there was challenges getting it to work. Uh, you know, you had to identify your IP address, connect the device to your machine, uh, you know, modify the proxy settings on your device and then undo those when you were done your testing. Um, you had to install certificates um, and, you know, as devices kept rolling out security features, sometimes you would actually hit problems where you just outright couldn't connect. And, you know, Android was actually one of those. I haven't been able to test Android through a proxy in years. Um, and then once you finally managed to get through through those, uh, you know, you often had to reinstall the certificate if your IP address changed. So it was never just uh, let's go and test. There was always some setup that had to be done before you could even start your, your testing scenarios. Uh, and then once you did get connected, of course, testing your data. Um, you would have to, uh, like, the analytics works by sending, you know, context variables to your analytics. Um, and those had to be mapped to, to their final processing rules. Uh, and that's fine, but if, when you're trying to do an end-to-end -end test, it was troublesome because, well, you could check that your context variables were set correctly, but then you had to wait an hour to see if that data showed up in your, your suite and if it showed up with the correct values. Uh, there was no direct feedback, um, you know, so you had to wait and then, you know, it would be up to an hour before you could test what you wanted to test. So obviously, uh, if, if any of you have done mobile testing before, you're all aware of, of those pain points. So in comes Project Griffin or AEP Assurance. There is no more proxy connection. So there's no security issues that you really need to bypass that are tied to the device itself. Everything is done server side. Um, you can do pair testing with other people in and out of the room. Uh, speaking from experience, I can now test with our QA testers in another city. We can both log into Griffin and we can see the data coming through simultaneously uh, and, and, and investigate it without having to point to somebody like on a screen share and go, oh, wait, 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 click, click on that. You know, there's none, no more of that. You can actually go and look at it and the sessions are recorded. So you can actually go back and look at them days later. Uh, I believe it's 30 days. Um, that it holds the sessions for. Um, yeah, thank you. Oh, oh, I hit the wrong thing. Sorry about that. Um, and best of all, your post processing values are immediately available or almost immediately. You have to wait a little bit for the handshake to happen, but you can see what your post processed values are going to be straight in your analytics. So now you can see all your props, all your EVARs, all the events that were triggered right there in the interface and it's it's great so um we were trying to keep this very short uh just to give you a, a quick update and now i'm actually going to introduce uh who you are probably more eager to to meet and that's our our guest uh jeff chasen who is uh 
really needs no introduction. Oh, wait, <clears throat> sorry about that. This is the correct photo. Uh, Jeff Jason is a senior evangelist. Uh, uh, we're getting some echo. I'm not sure somebody might have the microphone on. Oh, it was Jeff probably. Uh, he is a senior evangelist at uh, Adobe. Um, and if you'd like to introduce yourself and then we can get right into the session. Thanks very much, Shen. Can you hear me okay? Is that echo a problem or are we okay? Uh, uh, nope, nope, it's, I'm echoing, I'm gonna mute. Okay, okay, cool. So um, I like that picture you got of me on the on the right there with the mask. Uh, that's that's pretty good. The guy with the glasses doesn't look familiar, but the other one definitely in the morning, especially. Uh, thanks all for uh, spend you know taking some time and coming in to to spend some time with us. Appreciate the opportunity to talk with you. Uh, my name is Jeff Chasen. For those I haven't met, um, I'm an evangelist uh, in the digital experience unit of Adobe and I cover experience cloud and platform products. Uh, we're gonna go through uh, what, what is lovingly referred to internally, uh, as Jen mentioned, uh, Project Griffin, which is in the process of being rebranded to Adobe Experience Platform Assurance, which is actually in the scheme of things, in my personal opinion, pretty good name because it gives us some assurances and we'll look at, look at how that happens in a minute. Uh, just one uh, couple couple of notes. Uh, so I have I will have Xcode open uh, for the folks maybe that are that are joining that are not quite technical, not not developer focused, but more business focused. Uh, that's okay. Uh, when you when you see lines of code, you, you absolutely do not have to know anything about those. Uh, but but part of the process is I'll show what this looks like. Uh, but. And, and but we will also uh, absolutely talk about some of the business value and the thinking of why we're developing products like uh, Assurance at Adobe and, and some of the roadmap items that uh, we plan, the product team, the engineering teams have planned to roll out uh, coming soon. So, uh, and last note, a bit of housekeeping, this uh, in the in the 45-ish minutes or so we have left, uh, this is definitely just a highlight of the features of Griffin. There's no way that I will be able to uh, uncover every setting uh, and capability of the tool because it really is pretty uh, robust at this point uh, with a feature set. So it's these are just the highlights to give you an idea of, uh, of what you can get out of it if you uh, dig into it. And if you, if you do spend time uh, debugging, troubleshooting, validating mobile apps, or data flow that includes mobile apps, uh, I think it's worth some time to uh, to dig into it and, and give it a shot. So with that said, I'll stop blathering and uh, go ahead and share my screen. If you have questions that come up, feel free to put them in the chat pod. Um, or if, if I'm on something, uh, you have a specific question, feel, I don't know if we, we the audience can unmute themselves, but if you can, uh, feel free. Uh, and I'll I'll take questions if if time permits, but if it's too much of a rabbit hole, we might we might defer to the end. Uh, but we'll do the best the, we can. Uh, but nothing formal here. Obviously, this is I'm very casual in these uh, presentations, so feel free to ask away. Uh, uh, Steph, thanks for asking that. Um, there are absolutely learn more links, and you'll see when I get started with the demo that this this whole thing. Uh, is is a learning process that is available to you. Uh, so I basically went through a learning process for this and I'll show you how you can do the same thing. Uh, there will also be at the end a link, one link that leads you to uh, a page with all of the relevant links for all the things that I'm gonna be highlighting. So you will definitely get that uh, at the end. We'll also, uh, Chase and, and team can add it to uh, the YouTube as well. So with that, I will attempt to share and uh, hopefully not blow up my screen. Uh, can everybody see that okay? Okay, I'm gonna assume you can unless someone uh, chimes in. So uh, we're gonna go over assurance again. Most things, if you're an Adobe customer for longer than 10 minutes, you know that, it, that we love to uh, rename and rebrand things. Uh, and it, it's sort of a tongue in cheek joke. It's, it's not so much that we love to rename things, it's just that the way technology moves and the way we roll out features and services, uh, sometimes it's tough to keep up in terms of naming uh, and product categories and, and packages, as, as you well know. Uh, it was internally known as Project Griffin. 
uh, and is is in the process of of being rebranded to uh, Platform Assurance. Uh, give you a disclaimer that I did steal some some of these slides uh, from uh, our mobile our Wonder Mobile uh, Product Manager uh, Chetan Prasad, uh, who is fantastic and who uh, was deeply involved in with the engineers in the vision and the, uh, bringing this to life. So uh, uh, hats off to him for letting me swipe some of his slides. So just a quick agenda, we'll do intro. Uh, I'll read you the fine print of uh, all 1200 uh, slides. We'll do a quick demo. And then uh, if we have time in the six hours uh, that we have left, we'll do uh, some Q and A. Yes, I'm, I'm kidding. Uh, so where does this fit in and what do things look like now? Uh, this is sort of a map uh, of the Adobe world, so to speak, from one perspective. Uh, we'll see another view in a second, but. Uh, in terms of the Adobe Experience Cloud, uh, we have our, our products uh, uh, that deal with content and commerce in Adobe Experience Manager and Adobe Commerce, uh, formerly uh, known as uh, Magento. We have our Data Insights and Audiences products that I think most of you are familiar with, uh, Customer Journeys and Workflow with the recent acquisition of uh, Workfront. But sort of uh, this is a typical technology, what a lot of people call a layer cake uh, view. So just like a cake has layers from bottom to top or top to bottom, uh, this technology stack or, or uh, uh, architecture, if you will, has sort of these layers. And uh, for those that are unfamiliar or just not really experienced with the plat platform itself, Adobe Experience Platform is what powers a lot of these things. So in terms of data in and out, which we're going to be looking at, uh, content, artificial intelligence, uh, that these are things uh, through Adobe Experience Platform that power the services and applications that run uh, on the platform. Uh, services like identity service, profile service, uh, et cetera, things you see listed here under services. And then we have the applications that run a sort of a, an abstraction or a layer above these baseline services. Obviously, for mobile app tracking and mobile analytics, uh, Adobe uh, Analytics uh, comes into play very heavily, and we'll look, obviously, uh, at those details in, in a minute when we do go to the demo. Uh, another view of things, uh, a recent package that came out, uh, and this is not a sales pitch, but just a, a different view of things. Uh, Real, Adobe uh, Real-Time Customer Data Platform has a connections uh, package that includes co data collection uh, but also forwarding of event data to non-Adobe solutions. So like the Facebook Conversions API or Google Endpoints or pretty much any non-Adobe system that has an API that can receive data. But the reason I, I wanted to show this view is that so that you can see over here on the left-hand side, uh, we're, we're uh, collecting data, whether it's through the web SDK, the mobile SDK, which we're going to see, uh, or our recently released server-to-server -server API, regardless of how you get your data to Adobe or which device it comes from, uh, the way things uh, generally work these days is that uh, we've modernized our, our infrastructure so that this Adobe Experience Platform Edge Network, uh, which is a globally distributed uh, cluster of nodes and on the edge, as they say, quote unquote, uh, for the data collection. And then that data gets routed uh, to either the Adobe solutions that you see here in the red on the right, or through uh, event forwarding, uh, if customers have that package, uh, through event forwarding to non-Adobe endpoints. But really, this left-hand side uh, out to the middle, to the edge network, is, is what I wanted to illustrate here. So from pretty much any device or, or site uh, up to the edge and then out to where it needs to go is really a high-level view of the data flow. Uh, and <clears throat> so why Assurance, why Griffin, why this tool? Who cares? Um, I think everybody that's involved with analytics for any length of time realizes that uh, it, it's, it's a very competitive situation, right? Optimizing, engaging digital experiences, it's just, it's hard. Keeping people's attention these days, even harder. Um, and, and getting to a point where we can implement uh, these complex use cases that we're all being tasked with in a way that's efficient and effective and that we can iterate and improve over time uh, without stopping the world uh, and, and ripping out the plumbing, uh, finding ways to do that and make that easier so that we can gain momentum uh, and deliver value to our businesses, that, that's really what this is about. 
Um, there are tools, obviously, you're familiar with many of them, uh, whether it's Charles or Fiddler or uh, Requestly is a relatively new one. There are, there are a pretty significant number of uh, in, uh, inspection tools or proxy tools, as they're called. The difference here is that uh, we wanted to build uh, something that was really purpose built, uh, especially when it comes to our the customer experience data, which can be a little different than other types of data. Uh, and also uh, to give folks uh, conveniences relative to Adobe implementations so that makes you more efficient, more effective. So you can basically get out of the plumbing, right? Get out from under the cabinets and dealing with the pipes to um, actually get the water flowing and, and get those digital experiences out, get them tested, uh, get your results and iterate and optimize uh, and move forward for your business. So where does this all fit in and where does this happen? Uh, again, this is sort of a data flow, sort of a perspective. Uh, and, and I only have a couple of these slides, then we'll get into it. Uh, but just to give you sort of contextually like what we're doing here, if you think about a mobile client right here on the left, uh, you have a variety of types of data that you can send, uh, different data shapes. Uh, you can send state data, what is the state of the application at any given time, uh, lifecycle metrics like the apps moved to the background or it crashed or uh, et cetera, or it's been open. Uh, you can send uh, context data, uh, those key value pairs directly to Adobe Analytics. Uh, you can get requests and responses to target for content substitution. Uh, if you're dealing with audience manager uh, <clears throat> or you're dealing with uh, journeys or messaging for push identifiers and things like that, there's a variety of, obviously a wide variety of types of data and the shape of that data and what you expect the response to be that can come out and potentially back from a client. Um, and, and obviously on the right-hand side, you've got a variety of paths that that data can take just solely within the Adobe uh, suite of products. But as sort of an overlay to that data flow, we have uh, assurance that gives us a view uh, from the mobile client. Uh, we can look and see what is going to analytics uh, and being ingested, what is being processed, and what is ended. what then ends up in our reporting uh, so that we can validate that flow of data. Uh, and this is just one example. Again, these are highlights for, for uh, Assurance or Griffin. Uh, and I'm going to use those words interchangeably because, as I mentioned, this is a, a new rebranding. And so it, it hasn't sunk in with me yet either. I, I still call it Griffin. Uh, but it, I, can, I can assure you, uh, no pun intended, that uh, it, it is also known as Assurance uh, on our site. And I'll show you those links and uh, where you can get all the information about this. But you see here, this is just one flow, right? So a highlight to analytics uh, is something we're going to look at. And there's a lot of moving parts, as as Jennifer and, and Jeff mentioned, and I know anyone who deals with uh, apps and mobile teams, uh, whether it's application developers or just people that are looking for results in terms of business uh, out, outcomes, uh, when you're dealing with applications, a lot goes into it, right? It's a lot of effort to design an app and uh, and build the app and then instrument the app and then get it out to people and market it. There's a lot that goes into this. So we want to make that process as efficient and easy as we can along the way. Um, and and between mobile and web, we, we have uh, some uses of Griffin that we think uh, are helping that process quite a bit. We'll look at those screens in just a second. But this slide really just a call out that it is available to help uh, both on the web in terms of the uh, Adobe Experience Platform Debugger Chrome extension, which I'll show you in a second, that is uh, in part powered by Griffin, uh, and then uh, also for the mobile use cases we'll look at as well. And then, you know, what type of data we looked at, like the different endpoints or the or the different systems uh, within Adobe that where you can hook into uh, with uh, with Griffin. But obviously, analytics data validation is something we're going to look at, both the pre and post process data. Um, also, in terms of platform data collection, uh, if you are uh, thinking about uh, finding out more about Adobe Experience Platform or real time customer data data uh, profile use cases. Uh, Griffin is also uh, being used uh, to evaluate, validate, um, uh, inspect, et cetera, uh, the data that, that goes to platform. Uh, journey optimizer for push messaging valid validation, also a whole suite of use cases uh, that can be validated and, and simulated uh, and, and uh, testing and development is much easier uh, when using a tool like Griffin that is built uh, specifically for this purpose. 
Uh, we'll get to the demo in just a second. I'm, I'm done with the slides. That's all uh, 1,700 of them. Uh, it was pretty quick. Uh, so thank you for your patience through through that. But this this link down here, uh, let me, yeah, down there, which really you can't see it all now. Sorry. Uh, this link at the bottom, adobe.ly slash project Griffin. And I, I believe it's case sensitive. So capital P, capital G, uh, adobe.ly slash project Griffin. Uh, if you hit that link, it should redirect you to, uh, it's actually a, a, just a file on GitHub with these links that you see on the screen. So uh, these are the things that I'm going to be touching on in our in the demo here in a minute. Uh, so you can access uh, all the same materials through that link. OK, so uh, on the screen in the background, I have Xcode, which is my mobile app. And uh, on the, in the front, I have uh, browser, uh, Chrome is open, and this is the one view of uh, Griffin, one of the interfaces that's available through Griffin. Um, so this is actually uh, the system where you can view your sessions. And so when you connect Griffin to a mobile app or to a website, you start at what we what we call a Griffin session, and, and that's your debugging session or your data analysis uh, session. And so just real quick, we'll get into the mobile in a second, but I want to show you just an example uh, website. This is this is not uh, a real live uh, production coffee shop. This is uh, Fresh Cop Fresh Copa is one of the Adobe uh, demo demonstration brands. Um, but if I if I'm looking at this site and uh, I want to use the debugger to validate uh, in any information, I can open up this Chrome extension. It's available in the Chrome Store. There's a link. Uh, that uh, Project Griffin link uh, will lead you uh, to some other links, and one of those is lead you to the debugger on the Chrome store. You can check it out. But you can see it's got a pretty wide variety of, of features here. You can validate uh, if you're using a Web SDK or if you're using the analytics library uh, to collect data, target, excuse me, <clears throat> et cetera. Uh, one other cool feature is that um, through Griffin itself, if I sign in, to the debugger here, um, and I connect. I am now connected to a Griffin session, and so I'm. Th this is now. A, a, I've opened up a session where I can inspect web traffic uh, in in a variety of ways. So if I reload this page, uh, and I load this this log view, I don't see anything. Uh, and so you you may be thinking, well, that's you know useless. <laughs> it doesn't really help. So what we're looking at is uh, log files for edge transactions. So earlier where I showed you the connection slide for event forwarding to send data to out from Adobe to non-Adobe endpoints, um, if I load this, let's see, um, where do I have it set up? Oh, I think I have it on too many uh, test websites. So I'm switching from the coffee shop to the hotel uh, website, which is also uh, not a real site. But if I load this gallery page, connected to hotel booking, I thought it was there. Oh, this hey, is Jeff? this is the yes. Just hello. A quick, uh, just a quick question uh, from somebody in the chat. They're asking if you have any setup uh, within Adobe Launch for this coffee website. Do I have anything set up in Adobe yeah. Launch for this coffee website? Uh, yeah. Yes. Um, we're we're going to look at Launch in just a second. Yes. So I'll, okay. I'll show you what that looks like. But Thank you. So um, the event forwarding transactions are for sending data outside of Adobe uh, to non-Adobe endpoints. And if you come in here to the logs section of the debugger extension, this whole section of edge logs is actually powered by Griffin. So if I go back to the Griffin uh, user interface, uh, I'm not sure if it'll show up till I close it. Let's see. Okay, so I'm connecting, and let's clear. Connected. Oh, I need to lock it. So you can lock the debugger to a website with that little lock. And if I reload, uh, let's try the other gallery. Connected to booking or reload this. Connected to hotel booking. Not sure why this is. This is the the lovely uh, uh, effect of uh, live demos. There it is. So um, 
I should see some edge transactions. I'll have to check that. But these transactions that you see here coming from the client are the types of things that you would also see from the edge. Um, probably just using the wrong page. Uh, and again, this is just for web. So this is just a quick highlight of using the debugger and and showing some uh, of the features that are also powered by Griffin. But this is this is not uh, where you would do your mobile debugging. Uh, but it's just to call out that Griffin is a project that is touching a number of different areas in terms of improving observability and the the uh, uh, the view that you have to your data as it moves from the client up to the edge and then, to our different systems, and then out uh, also to uh, uh, outside of Adobe. And so here are the calls that are coming from the web SDK. You can see all these different events. And I see here's uh, the data that's actually being sent uh, that drives you know, the experiences that we're trying to drive. So this is uh, the debugger extension is, is one uh, use of the, the Griffin technology. Um, let me go ahead and close this website and go back to Griffin. And so you'll see here on this list of sessions um, that I have some web debugger sessions, and those are the debugger extension that I just showed you. And then I also have this tutorial app, which is a, a mobile uh, session. And so when we're implementing uh, or instrumenting, I should say, a mobile application uh, with tracking, there's a couple ways to do it. Uh, and what I did was I uh, to to I think it was uh, Steph who who asked about uh, the tutorials and you know learning materials. So I am very much a believer that uh, we should eat our own eat our own cooking at Adobe. And so uh, we have this great tutorial about how to implement the Adobe Experience Cloud in a mobile app. Uh, and it comes complete with a boilerplate uh, set of templates for an Xcode project. Uh, that you can uh, actually put together an app and instrument that app and go step by step uh, and, and test that out. And part of it obviously is validating that information with Griffin. And so that's actually what I did uh, for this uh, session today is I went through this tutorial myself uh, and I put together the app and I instrumented it with some of the uh, calls uh, and the data collection uh, that are in here. Uh, so I urge you to, to take a look at this if you deal with uh, this type of work in mobile apps. Uh, it starts, you know, very basic. Uh, I'm not an engineer, uh, so I was, you know, copying and pasting just like most most folks will. Um, and so it takes you through, you know, creating uh, the, uh, excuse me, <clears throat> data collection in launch using the extensions, et cetera, uh, and then all the way to, to a working uh, application. The application itself uh, is on GitHub where you can clone it down to your local desktop or just you know, download it uh, here uh, and download a zip file. And that gives you basically like the scaffolding, the, the core files that you need. It's actually a functioning app. And then you just go ahead and follow the tu tutorial to instrument your tracking into it. And that's what I did here uh, for this app today. Uh, and so if in the uh, experience platform, uh, mobile SDK docs, which are uh, really, really good, uh, our mobile team is uh, extremely detail oriented. Uh, they're they're really, really, really good. Uh, we have I am fortunate that I get to work with a lot of very uh, skilled and super smart engineers and product folks at Adobe. Uh, but our mobile team is sort of uh, they're they're just amazing. Uh, they they I think most of them type without actually touching the keyboard. They just kind of think and the and the and the, the keys move. Uh, but this bit here is just what I want to highlight. I'm obviously not going to read the docs to you here in this session, but I just want to point out that the uh, in terms of instrumenting a mobile app, now there are some, there are options for how to do that. We can do that with the Adobe Experience Platform Edge Network Extension where we can do uh, specific uh, solution specific extensions like the analytics extension. And so in an integration where we're doing uh, sending data to the edge and then to uh, one of the solutions, it, it looks uh, at a high level, sort of a basic level this way, you know, from the device up to the edge uh, and then to the Adobe solution as needed or for server side forwarding out to a third party. Uh, but if we're in, in integrating via something that's solution specific, then we're making calls directly uh, to the solution in question. Uh, and I've instrumented a little bit of both in this demo app just to show you what that looks like. But just wanted to pause and, and show you that uh, the docs do contain uh, options for both uh, and it's sort of how to get the best of both worlds. 
So uh, let me just rearrange my tabs here for a second. Uh, someone I think was asking about launch. And so this is the uh, property that I set up uh, for the uh, to instrument the mobile app that I built through that tutorial uh, that's called my tutorial app property. And you can see that I've got the Edge Network extension, the Assurance extension, which basically plugs Griffin into uh, the app experience. Uh, we've got the consent extension to comply with uh, consent pop-ups uh, where needed. Um, we've got the identity extension to take care of uh, vis unique visitor uh, identification. And then every mobile property and launch gets the core and the profile uh, extension uh, by default. And so I added these in as steps in that tutorial. Again, you can follow that uh, along just like I did. And in the rules section, you'll see it's super fancy. There's a really long list of one rule. And the only rule I really have set up here is uh, that I am sending lifecycle XDM events uh, to the edge network because uh, currently, in order to get those lifecycle events uh, sent to analytics, we, we send them separately uh, in a rule here in launch. But pretty much everything else is done by those extensions, either automatically uh, or uh, from calls that we make uh, inside of the application. So I'll take a quick pause here for a second. Um, this is, again, the tutorial app is this is where uh, the, ses the Griffin session is. Uh, and so if I come over here to my application, I'm, I'm in Xcode, uh, I have it built. Um, if you haven't seen Swift files before, uh, there are SDKs for different versions, uh, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, Swift Objective-C um, uh, and a variety of others as well. But you'll see here on this line, I think it's line 40, this uh, app ID, that's the environment ID or the link that, that plugs launch uh, that's a library link for our launch library that that connects launch to our application. Uh, so we just paste it in there. And then you also see uh, that I'm importing the uh, SDKs that I need for my application here. And I just copied and pasted those. It's it's not you know really complicated. I don't have to have these names memorized. You go to the docs and you copy and paste and, and you're good to go. Um, and then within the application, uh, as a user navigates, uh, so, for example, here's this home uh, Swift file, which is, uh, as you might expect, the home screen. So let me uh, open this up a bit. And so when the view appears uh, on this line here, uh, line 51, it says view did appear. Uh, this method or function uh, is called this view did appear. And there's a bunch of code stuff that happens, but basically we're tracking the state of the app. We're saying, oh, OK, the, the, the app is up and the home screen's uh, what what they're looking at. So that's the state of the app. And we've given it this uh, string to represent the state. So this Luma content iOS home, uh, basically uh, the, the home screen. And then we've got this uh, bit of data that I'm sending as XDM data. Now, so for those that are coming from uh, tip uh, analytics background uh, for mobile applications, um, you're going to have your track state calls and you're going to have your track action calls where you're tracking different things within the app. But with the edge uh, network and sending data to the edge, we also have the option to send XDM data. Uh, and much of that XDM data is auto magically mapped uh, to analytics through context variables. And I'll, we'll show you what that looks like in a minute. But this is basically just uh, something equals something else, right? So screen type equals app, screen name equals state name. And in this case, what that's going to be is home. So we're just setting what we want things to equal. We're inter incrementing a screen view with a value of one. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. And then we're actually making our calls here. So first on line 69, I'm making uh, the call to the edge for that XDM data. So I'm sending an event using that uh, experience uh, edge extension. And I'm sending in the data up, uh, from that experience event. Uh, which is this XDM data. Uh, and then on line 70, I'm also tracking state with a, a, a track state call uh, that you may know from analytics. And that's part of the analytic, the functionality that's included with the analytics SDK or extension in launch. And I'm sending a tracking state, I'm calling it home. And I say, okay, well, I'm gonna have a screen view and it's called home. Now these are obviously not any sort of best practice recommendations of, of labels, right, for screen views. And uh, and I'm not suggesting that every mobile app 
should have both a full edge implementation and analytics implementation. This is merely just a way to demonstrate to you some of the options that are now available by sending data either through the edge for automatic mapping to analytics variables or uh, continuing uh, to use track state and track action uh, like you've done in the past uh, with the analytics uh, SDK. So just an example. So I'm gonna go ahead and run this and everybody please, if you would do me a big favor. I know it's been a rough week for uh, a lot of us, uh, all of us. Uh, so I'm gonna click and I'm gonna run it and hopefully uh, we will see the application uh, launch because nobody wants to see an app crash, especially on a demo. Um, but things happen. So let's see where we get. So I've now gone into the session. Uh, my app is looks like it's launching, so yay for the app. Uh, and if I'm lucky, the session should connect because I had it opened uh, before. But we'll see what happens, we'll see if the, uh, the internet uh, gremlins are uh, cooperating. Uh, Jeff and, and Jennifer were kind enough to, to give us a gremlin themed or to give me a, a gremlin themed presentation because, uh, yes, I did, in fact, run into gremlins. Uh, and that's why we rescheduled. So apologize for that. But it looks like we're up and running. So you, you probably noticed that this column here in the Griffin session uh, was streaming and lots of stuff coming. So just a heads up, there's going to be a lot of data flying across the screen as I click things and as I move through this. Uh, I will absolutely scroll down and highlight the things that uh, I, I'm trying to highlight and focus on. So you definitely don't have to try to keep up with things as they're flying all over the place. So we have uh, application, the application over on the right here in our uh, simulator. This is just the simulator that comes with Xcode, uh, the Xcode application, and obviously an iOS app uh, because that's what I have available to me. Uh, if you have you know, a full-blown device lab where you're testing multiple versions, uh, that's awesome. Uh, most of us don't don't have that uh, kind of testing budget, but if you do, that's great. Uh, but you you don't need it uh, is really the the point to take away, right? I, I just have the built-in simulator, nothing fancy. Didn't pay for anything extra for this. I just opened up my running my app on my on my laptop, uh, and I connected it up to the Griffin session, and now I'm ready to do my data validation and debugging. So if I click, just to give you, orient you a bit here real quick on the UI. So if I show you the session details, uh, this is one of those things with Charles, we'll see in a second that it's not so easy to actually get connected. Uh, and Griffin has made that super easy. So we can either, if we're using a real device, we can just point the camera at this uh, handy QR code uh, and the app will open uh, and you'll connect your session. Uh, the key, the only things you have to input to to uh, Griffin to get your session going uh, for mobile debugging is a name, and there's a base URL. And for this application, that's the base URL uh, that was prescribed. That's in the tutorial. Your application will likely have a different value for that, but you plug those two things in. If you're using the simulator, uh, you can go here to the copy link option. You copy this link, you paste it over here in, in Safari or whatever your browser is, and a little keyboard will pop up with numbers. You punch in the pin and it connects and that's it. And, and it connects the way you see here. And if the gremlins are behaving uh, and not eating after midnight, then uh, it should reconnect pretty easily. Uh, you can also uh, uh, have multiple folks working in the same session uh, together. So if you're in one place, and you have QA people or mobile engineering team someplace else, and you want to look at the data together, you can do that, which is awesome. Uh, you just need the, the session name or the session ID, uh, and then you can, you can look at that together. So over on the left, you see in the navigation on the left-hand side, uh, looks obviously very familiar, like a lot of the uh, uh, Experience Cloud uh, products and user interfaces. One thing that's really handy is you can screenshot your app right from uh, uh, Griffin or uh, Assurance, excuse me. Uh, so as you're navigating through screens, if there's something you see that's either not right or you wanna make a note on it or you wanna make, have a call out, you just use this, take a screenshot. Uh, you can download those, pass those around, send those to colleagues, et cetera. That's a really handy feature. Um, you can see if you're using data elements uh, in your uh, uh, 
<clears throat> excuse me, your launch uh, property. You can see those. Um, I don't have any uh, data elements set that are currently being called in this application, but this is where they would be. Your extension version information uh, to validate that your uh, what your what is included in your bundle. Uh, you can see here this is all latest because this was just recently built. If you use any sort of you know geolocation uh, triggers or you know for for push messages, excuse me, <clears throat> for push messaging uh, or or offers or things like that, then um, you, uh, you can simulate location, uh, which if you have ever done any location based testing on an on an uh, app, uh, either in a device or on simulator, you know that that can be a challenge. So you can uh, simulate the loading, uh, this little button down here at the bottom of uh, points of interest, and then trigger uh, things uh, throughout your app. Uh, also for events, uh, if you, you have an event uh, selected, then uh, you can use that together with places service for validation. And then also uh, where we're going to look is uh, analytics events. And this is where we will see the different uh, states of our application. Uh, here's our track state and track actions and that kind of stuff. Uh, and we'll, we'll come back to that in a second. So let's run through uh, quickly uh, some, some uh, screens on the app and see what's happening. Again, uh, if I go back to the Xcode, uh, all we've done is built in what, what I've done or what your mobile application developers would do is build in, uh, say, for example, here, we're sending data to the edge and we're sending data to analytics because we saw the home screen. And for another example, if we're going to view a cart action, right, in this situation, we're looking at the cart and I have some obviously silly information, right? So here's the action. It's a cart looky-loo because we have looky-loos at the shopping cart. And the view is in my basket, but that's spelled wrong. So we want to fix that in post-processing or maybe map that to some other variable that we're using in analytics. Uh, and so we'll, we'll take a look at, at how to do that and how to see it. So let's look at, uh, again, over here, uh, as we see in the event screen, you'll see these events kind of go flying through as the data exchange happens as I walk through the app. Uh, but don't worry, we'll, we'll come back and inspect some of those. So if I'm, uh, again, this is this is the home screen. And it is, what, 12.53 my time. So uh, let's see, here's track and consent and configuration. Uh, let's see, 12.47, 12.47, 12 OK, so here's today. Uh, here's where we started today. And that's where the state change happened. Basically, I opened the app. Uh, and then you have a variety of uh, things happening, data going back and forth. Uh, we got configured with the application ID. There was a sta another state change. Consent preferences were updated because we've defaulted this application to give consent. Although if there was a pop-up, it would wait and it wouldn't do anything until that consent was given. Uh, you can, as the app is getting up and running and, and getting ready to go, then that you see there's a request made to the edge to Adobe Experience Platform. Uh, and then we have our first analytics track call uh, being made when the app was open. We can see the response that came back from analytics. <clears throat> Excuse me. We can see the response handler of what was done with that, uh, the analytics hit that went directly to it, the mapping that occurred automatically with that data. Uh, so we, we don't have a ton of time left, so I, I can't walk through all of the details of all these things, but as I go up, uh, in more recent events, you can see the cycle, right? So the, the request goes out here from the edge. There's an analytics track call, just like I showed you in Xcode a minute ago. We had both of those built in, so they happened almost simultaneously. We have the response from analytics. Uh, we have a response from the platform. Excuse me, the platform then sends that, and there's the hit to analytics. There's the automatic mapping of that data. <clears throat> Excuse me, so if I go over here to the mapped query parameters, and I take a look at what I have here. Uh, here are all my context data variables, right? So I didn't send these. I didn't. I didn't set these, right? So if I go back here to my home screen uh, and I, I have my home view, you don't see a whole laundry list of of, cons uh, of context variables. Uh, this is uh, analytics on the back end is taking care of this, you know, sort of grunt work for me, which is beautiful, and it sets up these context data variables and populates with uh, what I sent. Uh, you've got your report suite ID. I just have one here, this sample. Um, but you can really get in there and inspect exactly uh, what happened. But here we see that string that I sent, which is the, the state in the track state call, which is now mapped 
to uh, a um, schema that I've set up in Experience Edge, and that's set up as context data, and then that context data is then available to send uh, to analytics. So in, if I go into processing rules, because I know that uh, Jennifer was keen to, to take a look at, at that feature of Griffin, one thing that's tough with Charles is when you open up Charles and you see the same data going back and forth, um, you, you don't really get a view to what happened if any of your data was modified by processing rules. And yes, I'll admit these are sort of contrived, right? These are just sample uh, rules, examples. These aren't, you know, uh, act, things that you would mimic in production. Of course, it's just sort of from a demo. So I have basically if the action which I send as context data, uh, if it contains this account view, then what I'm doing is I'm overwriting the page name with uh, context data from another property, which I have set to the app state details. And again, this is with an implementation using the edge extension, but if this was with the analytics extension, it would be a very similar process. You're basically just looking for certain fields and then based on the condition of those fields, overwriting them. Uh, you could also, if you're not familiar or you haven't worked with uh, processing rules before uh, a lot in the past, you can overwrite values, you can delete values, or you can even set events, which is great because uh, sometimes uh, when data comes in, we want to use that to trigger, to, to set an event in analytics, and we can do that in processing rules. On that list of links uh, are pages that tell you uh, specifically which fields from uh, the edge extension in XDM format are automatically mapped and which are not, and then also uh, which dimensions uh, from analytics are available uh, to operate on here in processing rules. So those links are in there, excuse me, at that page of resources, but you can see here uh, when there's a, uh, uh, an, when the action comes in with a, a, a cart looky loo, which is the other action uh, that, that we set up, uh, we're going to change the transaction ID to to bingo just to to make it obvious. So if I go back to Griffin and I should be able to see that in action. <clears throat> excuse me. So if I get, let's uh, try the cart. This little floater uh, Adobe Experience Platform logo with the green uh, dot here that you see moving around the screen on the app simulator um, is actually uh, the indication that Assurance is running. Um, if you have it set up to log data uh, at this point, then you'll have uh, some log information that can be handy right here in the app. You can see on that screen, uh, or you can just disconnect uh, if you want to end your session. Excuse me, but that that little floating icon, that's what it means you're connected. Uh, when it's green, you're connected to a Griffin session. So uh, we had an account view that we wanted to change, uh, right, if I remember correctly. Uh, so let's see. So when the action uh, is an account view, uh, then we map uh, a value of the app state details to page name, and then we also have a cart uh, action, and we uh, set we change the transaction ID. So uh, let's go to the cart and to our account view, and we can take a look at that data. So I'm going to grab this uh, set of Sprite Yoga straps because who doesn't need a set of Sprite Yoga straps, especially me. Uh, so I just added the, the size large because with all this work from home, uh, I need a bigger size. And I go to the yoga bag and better get the extra large for all my stuff. And I'll add that to the cart. And that's been added. And I go back. And again, this app is uh, very minimal, obviously, and simple. But it, it's also great uh, for prototyping or getting comfortable with, with Griffin or app debugging because it's simple, right? It doesn't use a whole like React uh, framework. It's it's not a complex app with a whole bunch of things going on. Uh, so it's great for this uh, learning experience. So if I come over here and I log in, our app uses this super security where when I click the login button and then I go back, I'm in super secure, uh, not recommended for the financial services folks. So I'm looking at my account and uh, let's see, I'm gonna just cancel out of that. And then I'm going to go back here to my cart and I'm going to view the cart. And had I been over here on the Griffin screen, you this is where we were a minute ago at, at 12.47, and it's now 1 o'clock my time. So if I scroll, you see all this stuff that was happening 
up here. Uh, so a long list of events. Some of this is just validation, not necessarily data that I sent. Uh, but we go up here, and you see there's still stuff coming in. And now we're at 1301, which is 1201 my time. So this is where we are currently. And so if I go back, <clears throat> excuse me, you see the analytics request, the analytics hit, the mapping, et cetera, right? Um, so again, the context data in this event that I've highlighted on the left, we're looking at the mapped query parameters over here. And so uh, this is the data that was mapped to analytics from the edge. But again, I'm thinking, okay, well, what I'd like to see is like what happens after the fact, right? That that change that we set up in processing rules over here, uh, it, it, how do I how do I see that over here? So here's a track call, and this is the event and the context data, and there's my uh, <clears throat> excuse me my, my cart looky loo uh, action uh, with the in my basket, uh, but I don't I don't see that changed, and so let's see uh, let's see the other tracks, yeah. So the account one should be here too. There's another track. Maybe this is this is the home. We went back home, and you can filter this list. So I don't have it filtered. I have a lot of the uh, validation, uh, streaming validation. You'll see that and the hits received. So you can either search, right? So I can limit this and just say analytics like that, and then I get just all the analytics related uh, stuff. Like if I just want to see analytics track, I can filter uh, search for all those, and they come to the top. So here are all my track calls. Uh, make it a little bit easier. So these, this is here's the cart view, and I'm tracking the state of the cart, uh, etc. Here I'm back to home, right? So you can see uh, my username, account sign in, that process we just did. So you can really just walk through each of these events and the screens and what happened. But in order to see the post process data, what happens to this data after processing rules take effect, over here on the left, that's what this little analytics event section is for. And so when Jennifer said, excuse me, this available, this information is available immediately, and then backed up and said almost immediately, what she meant was you saw all those little uh, orange or yellow dots turn to green. Uh, and so if the uh, internet connection uh, gremlins are, are cooperating, <clears throat> excuse me, then we get that, that fast view. So here's a view, uh, again, we're looking at similar events, right? Here's our track states and our tracks act, track actions. And you'll notice you don't see the AEP uh, or edge events because this data is the data that we sent with those track state and track action calls. So if you're dealing with a, a typical analytics implementation in a mobile app with the uh, analytics SDK specifically for that solution, then you're sending data directly using your, your uh, track state and track action calls. And this analytics event view uh, is, it focuses simply on those. And so here's that cart looky loo with the cart view, and here's the request. Uh, that went in, and you can see the post-processed and request details. So if I come down here, uh, let's see, where did I? Okay, so here's my transaction ID of bingo. So if I go back to my, if you remember from my uh, uh, processing rule, what I'm doing in this example is when an action comes in that contains this cart looky loo value, I'm overwriting transaction ID with bingo. And I can use Griffin to say, well, guess what? That is absolutely working. And so I know that when I go to my report suite and I generate reports or I'm using CJA, uh, that I'm gonna that transaction ID is gonna have the value that I want. Uh, the cart, I think, was the other one, uh, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, so let's see. That was the bingo. So let's close that one up. And then the oh, the account view was setting page name to app state details. So if I go back there, <clears throat> excuse me. So here's my uh, page name of track state cart, which uh, if, I, if I go back to the raw event uh, information, uh, it won't show that same uh, value because we're overwriting it with uh, the context variable value, which is that track state and the colon and a space and the cart. So I can see that my post processing of that hit has populated the page, my page name variable the way I wanted. And so all of these events that you see here, uh, I know it's a long list, and it, this is a lot of information all at once, 
Uh, but it, uh, compared to something like Charles, which I can, uh, I know we're a little bit over time, uh, so, uh, but I can fire that up if you like, but finding this information uh, in Charles is not gonna happen, obviously, because we don't have that round trip, that built-in capability that Griffin has to, uh, in, to evaluate after uh, the uh, processing rules have been applied. So really handy for that type of validation if you make use of processing rules, but also really handy just for this view in terms of the events of filtering. Uh, if you have, you know, say AEP type events or you have analytics, uh, sorry, <clears throat> I didn't give it time. Uh, here you can also filter out uh, by type, you can hide certain types. You can look for certain, this vendor column, uh, here's the Adobe Edge and here's Griffin uh, and here's analytics, right? So if I wanted to filter out by analytics only, I could do that, uh, et cetera. So it's a very customizable. Uh, there are also a variety of configuration options. So you can really dial in the view that you need to inspect the data uh, that you're interested in uh, very quickly and efficiently, which is also great. Um, it was great, had very handy for me in terms of walking through this sample app and, and demonstrating these calls because I can tell you uh, I am not an expert in mobile app development and I copied and pasted uh, these bits right from the tutorial just like uh, anybody, uh, uh, any of you might if you if you decide to to go through that. Uh, it's, it's pretty cool, uh, great resource. So, so that's a really quick, uh, very high level uh, rundown of what that looks like. Um, I can show you real quick in Charles uh, that that is a lot more complicated for anyone who's not done this. Uh, you first have to filter to make sure you don't get a whole bunch of nonsense. You have to do go into your proxy to your SSL proxy settings and set up a certificate. And uh, if anybody on the call has the uh, short URL memorized to download the proxying certificate from, from Charles, I, uh, that, uh, that would really impress me. Uh, I could see if there's some Adobe swag I can get to send you, but it's this really hard to find uh, link to get uh, the, the certificate to, to get this to work. But you have to enable the, the SSL proxying uh, which you don't have to worry about, obviously, if you're in uh, Griffin and you set up your recording uh, and then you move through your app, uh, just like we just did. I go to my cart view and I go to my account view uh, and I go home and maybe I do a life cycle event and send it to the background. And now in, Ch whoop, sorry, in Charles, we, we've got these uh, requests right, with the events and the contents. And you can see this data uh, because I've got the certificate already installed. <clears throat> Excuse me, so here's the connection. Uh, let's see, overview. Uh, so this uh, data.adobedc.net with my echo, that's my uh, uh, demo organization. Uh, and so that's where the, the requests are going. So I have it filtered right now for that. But if I didn't filter it out, you would see pretty much all the traffic, right, going through from my computer uh, currently. Uh, so a uh, little bit more confusing, obviously. Um, uh, so getting to the information you need, finding uh, the values that were sent, um, and seeing uh, if that data is consistent in your application is a, a lot more involved when you're using sort of a generic uh, proxy tool like Charles or, or Fiddler. Uh, and certainly a lot more work to get set up. Uh, so I'm gonna turn this off just so it doesn't bomb me out. Uh, and I'm gonna take a breath because I know I'm over and I apologize for, for going over the, the schedule time, but just wanna take a pause there. I know that's a lot of information uh, all at once and a lot of words. Uh, so if anybody has uh, questions or, or things that, um, Oh, look at that. Jennifer just really wants the swag, right? See, she got that URL memorized. Burned oh, no, and Andy got it first. A Andy, uh, Andy, Andy is the winner. All right. It's definitely me, Andy, no. <laughs> let, me take a, let me take a screenshot and I'll send that to product and I'll, I'll see. I, they don't give me swag because I'm, I'm just a worker bee, but I'll, I'll see what the bosses. <laughs> 
uh, can can work up. But I'm very impressed that that is burned into your brain. Uh, and if and if anyone uh, is familiar with what I'm talking about with that uh, SSL certificate, I would highly recommend you spend some quality minutes with uh, Griffin. Uh, I, I think you'll you'll find it a lot smoother experience for this type of debugging. Uh, and and this type of work, uh, Adobe specific work, um, between the debugger extension uh, on Chrome on the web side of things to validate data collection, and Griffin with the uh, mobile uh, uh, sessions, um, you you can really get down to specifically what you need to validate, uh, what you need to simulate, get in, get your work done, and then get out and get things moving. And I, this type of a tool, that's what that's all about. Um, it makes um, things that can be, you know, tedious and take a lot of time uh, a little bit more enjoyable, a little bit easier, and a little bit faster, uh, and in some cases, a lot faster. Um, and also gives you a way to uh, validate data. So for your stakeholders or for the business folks, uh, when, when, you know, we all, I started in this weird uh, bit of the web as a web analyst, uh, cranking out reports, and so I know better than a lot of people uh, the look on somebody's face when they say, okay, so they, and what they're thinking is, how do I trust this? Uh, not that they didn't trust me, but how do they trust the data? Uh, I know that's something that we deal with all the time um, with stakeholders. And so this type of validation, uh, this type of documentation, the screenshots, uh, proving the data in uh, post-processing is what it's supposed to be, just I think really goes a long way towards giving stakeholders uh, more confidence uh, that, they're, that the data they're seeing uh, is reliable. So if anybody, uh, uh, sorry for going over, I know if people have to jump, uh, uh, don't, don't feel like you have to stay uh, for me, but uh, if anybody has time, uh, if you have questions, uh, I have a few minutes, uh, I'd be happy to answer or uh, revisit uh, anything that we touched on. So Andy, I'm glad you think it's amazing. Uh, I will absolutely show uh, the, the product team will, and the engineers especially, uh, who put a lot of uh, uh, TLC into this uh, system. Um, it's, it's quite a feat of engineering and it's, uh, it's really, uh, uh, I know, very useful for a lot of customers. Uh, so it's great to, to hear that kind of feedback. But if anyone goes through it after this session and you have any uh, concerns or questions or for whatever reason, the, you, the resources that you think you need, you can't find, uh, please feel free to reach out. Uh, I'm pretty easy to get a hold of on Twitter and Slack and everything else. Uh, so feel free to reach out. Happy to help uh, point you in the right direction. There's also a Griffin uh, Slack workspace that I believe uh, the product team maintains. Uh, so if you're interested in that, let let someone at Adobe know, and, and we'll try to get you hooked up with that. Uh, Actually, uh, while you were talking, we posted an invitation that will expire in 30 minutes, or yeah, or 30, was it 30 minutes? Um, anyway, it uh, or 30 days, uh, whichever. We've posted an invite in the chat, so uh, and we'll send that out as well when we send the email out. Um, that's awesome. Thank you very much for doing that, Jennifer. You're welcome. Uh, pre Priya asked a question just a minute ago about the QR code. And um, so there's this thing with the deep link uh, and in an app and, and, the, and the code. Um, tr I would, if the QR code is not working, try the link. Uh, try to, to, to copy, you can copy and paste that link. Uh, if you have, I'm not sure if you're on iOS or Android, but if you can get that link to your device, uh, I don't know if you're on an actual device or a simulator, but if you get it, get that link and then punch in the code, sometimes that's easier. Uh, the other thing is that if you um, look at those links that I sent, that adobe.ly slash project Griffin, and it's capital P, capital G, uh, the, that list of links, one of them goes directly to the docs for uh, the mobile SDKs and for project Griffin. And uh, Griffin is the very bottom section of those docs. Uh, so if you scroll down all the way on the left, you'll see Griffin. And there's instructions that say, hey, my app won't connect. What do I do? Uh, because I visited that specific section, I don't know, 1,400 times in the last, <laughs> in the last 
uh, I, I visited that section quite a bit, and uh, those tips are very handy. Uh, and uh, sometimes it's just uh, uh, the timing of when the uh, QR code uh, gets invoked. Uh, the other thing is to also make sure that deep link entry uh, is correct for your app, uh, because that that definitely impacts the QR code or the link method of connecting. That that deep link, uh, that that link for your application has to be uh, the right one. Right. Uh, I believe um, Priya, she was uh, chatting earlier about, about this issue. I believe she's on an, an Android device. If you are on Android, um, I don't think you can open up the, the 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 link directly in your browser. You will need to install an app called like a Deep Link Tester or one of those type of things. That's what I've had to do on all our Android devices. So uh, just just be aware of that. Um, iOS seems to open up the apps if you just open them in, in Safari, but it doesn't seem to work in, in Android. Yeah, thanks for that, Denver. I just pasted also the link to the troubleshooting for app uh, not connecting. So um, if you if you click that, it has the specific instructions that, that Jennifer was uh, mentioning. Uh, I believe the app is called Deep Link Tester, if I'm not mistaken. If, if you search for at least in the, the Play Store, if you search for Deep Link, um, it should you should get a few options. Uh, which also, if you are using something like Browser Stack for your your uh, testing, so not a simulator, well, actually even the simulator, if you're using a simulator or something like Browser Stack, which is connecting to real devices but online, and you can't use the camera to scan the QR code, the same app uh, can work on those two instances to, to get you into your, your testing. So if, if you are trying to use simulators and you are going, well, how do I make this work? That's how. Oh, Jeff, I think you did a really good job. There weren't a lot of questions coming through, mostly just like jaws dropped and uh, going, oh my God, this is so much easier. <laughs> Either that or people uh, took the chance to take a quick nap, but um, um, that's, I hope that uh, you all got something out of it. Um, I think if you, you spend a little bit of time and, and you know, like most of these tools, once we get comfortable with them and once they're part of our workflow, it's obviously a lot easier. Uh, but if you, I think if you spend a little bit of time, you'll you'll see the attention that went into it and and the benefit that it brings. And the, I know that the product and engineering team, both on the mobile uh, side, many of the product teams uh, at Adobe, but especially the mobile team, is always very interested to your feedback. Uh, if there's a use case you're not able to to test or validate or simulate, uh, or if you're struggling with a tool, they would love to to get that feedback. Uh, uh, to to improve things for you. So feel free to to let us know. Yeah, totally agreed, Andy. Uh, anything that makes it more consistent and and helps us validate is knock on wood. Amen. Uh, it's good stuff. So thanks all for the time. Uh, if you think of anything after the fact, uh, feel free to let me know. Reach out online. Um, and uh, appreciate you spending the time with us today. And I hope that uh, Assurance and, uh, and or Griffin, uh, however you prefer to, to, to call it, uh, hope it, it helps makes your day a little bit easier uh, and really appreciate your time uh, today. Thanks very much. All right. Well, that ends our session for the day then. Yes. Perfect. And uh, like I said, this uh, this session is going to be re or was recorded and we'll get it posted onto the YouTube channel for everybody as well. Uh, but thanks, everybody, for your time. Yeah. And just one more thing. Uh, I, I personally haunt the uh, the, the, the Project Griffin uh, chat, so you can always uh, find me there if you have uh, follow up questions um, and I'd be happy to help you. Awesome. All right. Thanks, Bye. everybody. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks all. Bye. Bye. All right, Chase, you can end the recording. <laughs>